We're back out here at the Big Lake once again. And today we're talking about what may be the dumbest idea I ever had. How did it work out? Was it good? Was it bad? Well, you'll have to stick around to find out. Come on, I got him. Who's that grass? Oh, that's a fish. Well, oh, he's trying to dig, trying to get away. That's a nice. And here is this video's featured comment. Congratulations! If you would like to have a chance to have your comment featured in an upcoming video, all you've got to do is leave a comment. And now, on with the video. Welcome back to Lowbrow Fishing. And if you were here for the last video, you know that I talked all about summertime jerk baits. But if you watched all the way to the end of that video, you saw something special. You saw me on a lark on a whim decide to go to the heavy hydrilla to the shallow water and fish a jerk bait up there. And I gotta say, the results were very, very intriguing. I was able to catch a couple of nice fish and it really surprised me how well I was able to fish it. Sure, I got gummed up a little bit, but not nearly as much as I thought I was going to. So today I decided I was gonna come out here and I was going to really dedicate it myself to fishing open treble hooked baits in that thick hydrilla. So we started out with the old standby, right? This guy right here. You guys remember this guy. This is the old jerk bait I've had for such a long time, the old H2O Express. And I had that and that Yozuri jerk bait, I had those tied on. And we headed north all the way to the north part of the lake and got real skinny. We're talking two feet of water. As you can see here in this video that I took on the way up there. It's just basically hydrilla after hydrilla, and then it just turns into a solid mat of hydrilla. And that's where I was going to fish these things. I was curious, was there a way that I could work it so that I wouldn't get so gummed up with vegetation on every single cast? And even if I could do that, would the fish even be interested? Would I be able to try other types of baits in those conditions and maybe have similar types of results? So. That's what I decided I wanted to find out today. Got here early in the morning, just after sunup, started fishing that water, and well, I gotta say, I was really, really amazed because it wasn't long and we were catching some really, really nice fish. All right, we are in the middle of the danger zone. We got the old Yozuri jerkbait tied on. It's a windy day, but you can see this is where we're going to be fishing out here. There's, you know, emergent hydrilla everywhere, but I said I was going to experiment. But I said I was going to experiment with it, and that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to experiment with it. That feels like a fish. That is a fish. And I got him in the tail. I got him backwards. That's funny. Well, not, oops, not for you, that wasn't funny. That little dude right there, little, I don't know, not quite a pound. So that's the first one. Skunks out of the boat. Let's move on to the next one. Thank you, little buddy. Like I said before, you know, if you saw the last video, the key to all of this is ripping it on a slack line. I got him. He came up and got it right there. Yep. That is a nicer one. That is a nicer bass right there. That's a good one. 
Thank you very much, dude. I really appreciate that. Nice little two pound bass. Okay, so we caught nice fish on the jerk bait. What was the setup? Well, as I talked about before, this really isn't even my jerk bait rod. This is my swim bait setup. I've got a loose spinner here with 12 pound fluorocarbon on a seven foot medium heavy ducket rod. And this has got a little bit more backbone. So that's why I chose to use this today because my normal jerk bait setup is it's a spinner, but it has 10 pound braid, a medium or a medium light rod with it. So it's got that softer tip. I feel like I get better action with that. Some guys like to do a bait cast. Me, I like to do it on a spinner. Again, as we've said, use what you feel comfortable with. That's what works for me. But I wanted to see what else I could do because this actually worked so well. So the next thing I pulled out was this guy right here, this ugly looking thing. This is a homemade bladed jig. And I'm telling you what, it's a quarter ounce and you can see the scars on the side of its head because I did this one just a little bit differently. If you notice, you see where the line tie is? You see how that line tie is, um, I guess, in line with the bait rather than perpendicular like you normally would have with a bladed jig. And then I used a split ring and I attached this rather than going straight from the bladed jig into the line tie. I wanted to see if I could get a little bit more action. And as you can see by the head of this bait where that blade's been digging into it, well, I certainly did get a lot of action. Figured we would go ahead and fish that in there. And one of these trailers, that's also part of it. This is a homemade trailer that I make, but not just any trailer. And you can see, you know, I've got it rigged on there, kind of sideways like that. There's that hook point. Now, the thing about this trailer is, that's very interesting, is I used my own secret sauce on these. I wanted to make a scented bait. And I'm telling you what, these things stink. Once you open up that plastic bag, it is unmistakable. Perhaps I maybe overdid it with the secret sauce, but that plastic bait is more for an upcoming video about whether scents are as effective as we think they are, you know, how that works. And we'll get into that at the appropriate time, but I just wanted to try it out today up in that heavy, thick hydrilla. A bladed jig obviously is a good choice, but with that bladed jig, with that super wobbly action in it, would that be a good choice And well, See for yourself. And I have caught really nice fish on this particular bladed jig. On this particular homemade bladed jig I caught, last time I used it I caught, I don't know, it was just shy of four pounds. So, I do like that. Come on, I got him. Is that grass? Oh, that's a fish. Well, he's trying to dig, trying to get away. That's a nice, nice fish there, buddy. See? Yep. Uh, uh, uh. It's a little nicer fish there. Barely had him. Nice little two pound fish, beautiful, gorgeous fish. Caught it on the homemade bladed jig. Thank you, buddy, we really appreciate it. Okay, so that bladed jig caught really nice fish. And I'm starting to think, okay, we we found the pattern. If nothing else, we found what those nicer fish are hiding. And you know, they weren't giants, but all of these fish were in that two pound class range. And I don't know about you, but I will take catching two pound fish all day, any day. You know, as we say, a dink is better than a skunk. I'll take that. But a two pound class fish consistently over and over again, I don't know of any angler that'll really turn that down. So what was next in line? What was the next thing that we wanted to try? I decided I was going to get really crazy. I was going to go all in, as they say, right? And that I got this little square bill. This is a Berkeley pit bull. They don't make these anymore. Now they have the square bull, but this is a Berkeley pit bull 5.5. 5. 
I figured five and a half feet, right? That should be about safe. We're fishing in about three feet of water. I wanted to see just exactly what we could do with it. And this is, you know, kind of a peanut butter and jelly crawl color. And, you know, the brown bladed jig did okay. So I figured maybe this will do okay too. So I started throwing this around. And, well, this is what happened with that. There we go, I got him. That feels good, that feels like a good fish. That's a good fish. It's not a good fish, but he hit it. He hit it like he wanted it. He hit it like he wanted it. Let me see what I got here. Eh. Not even, I don't know, maybe three quarters of a pound, if that, maybe a little over half a pound, little bitty guy. But we sure appreciate it. Thank you, little bitty guy. There he goes. All right, now we're just getting silly, I guess. I've got this Storm um, Thunder Stick tied on. It is a deep diving jerk bait. So we're gonna see how it does. I mean, it's a floater, but I am trying to get you know, deeper in. But I'm only getting about, I don't know, 50, 50. Oh, there we go, I got him. Wow, threw it right on top of him. And he went after it. Okay. I foul hooked him bigger. No, I didn't foul hook him. I just threw it right in his head. Okay. Ooh, almost got your eye, buddy. Ah, 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 let's get you down. Let's get you down. So. so we've consistently proven that open troubled hooks can get the job done in all that thick veg, all that slop, right? You may be cleaning your hooks quite often, and I was. My poor little boat was covered, but I was catching fish, and I was making some progress. M my brain, the ideas were going, right? My crazy, broken brain. You guys know how it works, the strange things that I come up with. I actually have a whole lot of ideas. The juices are really flowing on this. But today, I was catching so many fish that there's no way I will be able to show them all. If I were to show all the fish that I caught today, this video would probably be 45 minutes, 50 minutes long. I caught that many fish. I was so surprised and good quality fish, except for the one on the square bowl, right? Or the pit bull, I should say. That was the littlest one I caught all day, but we still caught fish with it in the heavy vegetation. So we'll call that a win. So what do we learn from this? Well, take risks, take chances. That's the moral of this story. That's what I want to convey to you. You guys know I come up with some weird cockamamie things. I have some crazy out of the box ideas. I get laughed at and I get made fun of a lot because, you know, from people around here, because oh, lowbrow's got another crazy idea. But a lot of times they work. And even when they don't work, at least I tried. And now I know to put something else out, to try something else. So don't be afraid to change the paradigm. Don't be afraid to challenge yourself when you're out on the water. So there you have it. My idea, my crazy idea, ended up working out very well. It's something I'm definitely going to explore as the summer goes on. Not only did I find that I could work troubled baits in those types of waters, with some caveats, obviously, but I was finding that's where nicer quality fish were hiding. So obviously, we want to be able to catch those nicer quality fish. So don't be afraid to change things up. Don't be afraid to challenge yourself. You can see that it worked well for me. So whatever you do, give it a try. You may just be amazed and you may just have something new that you can share with everyone else. Thanks for watching Lowbrow Fishing. We'll catch you in the next one.